with the new release of the Tamron 50-300, it begs the question to know, should you get this one over the 50-400, and is it going to be the right choice for you? Tamron was very kind to send me these lenses to test out because I'm actually trying to see which lens I want to use when it comes down to sports photography at the US Open later this year. I wanted to see what could be fast and efficient with good focal length, but also not be overly heavy and, you know, kind of dragging whenever I'm going to be out and about in New York City. For me personally, I wasn't really sure how much the weight difference was going to be between these two lenses, so I wanted to see for myself in person because sometimes what we see on, you know, a screen or anything, the representation is not as nicely as you could be than when you see it in person. So I want to do my best to kind of give you the pros and cons when it comes down to the size, what you get out of the focal ranges and the speed and everything from each lens to see which one could be the best one for you. First and foremost, the 50 to 300 is a lot lighter lens compared to the 50 to 400. As you can tell right away from the size right here, they're pretty much a big difference when it comes down to the sizing between these two lenses. Now, you are gaining some stuff with the extra weight versus the lighter weight one. With the 50 to 300, you have less custom buttons. You have obviously only to the 300 range, but you have the same aperture from the 4.5 to the 6.3. Now on the 50 to 400, you're getting that extra 100 millimeter range from the 300 to the 400 that you lost with the previous lens. You also get a little bit more of customization with the buttons that it can have on the lens. So if you need that, that's something that you might need as well. Both these lenses have vibration compensation in their own way. This one, you have an actual button to be able to put it on or off. This one, you don't have a button. You're just gonna have it on at all times. That's my guess, unless you go ahead and turn it off in camera which personally, I'm not really sure how to turn it off on my camera because generally I just kind of let the stabilization be on it because it's always good to have for whatever I need, whether it's with photo or video. Another thing that you're gonna find of a bigger difference is going to be the price point. For the 50 to 300, you can get it at 800 USD. And when it comes down to the 50 to 400, you get it at a 1300 USD. With a little bit of the price difference, the question arises, is the extra money worth for that extra focal length and the bigger lens? Or can you shave some of that off to save some money and still have a great telephoto lens? But enough of the boring talk, we're going to go ahead and give you some examples of shooting with both these lenses. I'm going to be having it where I'll use it for my tennis academy, getting a little bit of photos and video so you can see a little bit more of that action, as well as showing you some portraits that I got able to do for another video that that way you can see what I was able to do with the 50 to 300. But I'll give you some examples as well with the 50 to 400. I've actually done a video with this lens before, so I don't want to get too far deep into kind of the comparisons of that end, but more about what you're gaining, what you're losing, if it makes more sense for you for your budget, which one would you go for, and what you can get out of the lens for said budget. So let's get to those examples. First up, we're shooting with the 50 to 300 to showcase a little bit of the sports photography with this lens to see how well it works. My goal was just, just to have the distance away from the students, try to capture up close and personal and use the dynamic of the focal range for some example shots. Now it's time to use the 50 to 400 to showcase a difference of how much you can get extra with the 400 millimeter range and just use it as versatility for the focal range as well like with the 50 to 300. My main goal was to take photos as much as I could to make sure that the focus point was as good as the other lens. We have both cameras set side to side for a video example to showcase the difference of the focal range. That way you guys can see how it'll look. I'm gonna try to stand in the same spot every time just so you guys get an idea of it. And that way we can compare them both kind of scenarios like side to side so that you can see essentially how they'll look. It's not gonna be super scientific. I try to get them as close as possible as I could to each other, but that way you get a little bit of an idea.
And now that we saw the examples, I want to talk a little bit further about the pros and cons of each lens that are my opinion and obviously use them as a grain of salt, but maybe they'll help you out in your decision. When it comes down to the 50 to 300, the biggest pro to me is the size of it and the weight of it. It is so nice to be able to have it in your hand that it's actually lighter than my 35 to 150, at least it feels like it when I'm out and creating, that it honestly kind of made me feel like I just had a little bit of a bigger 28 to 75, but it had such a massive focal range. That being the biggest pro of this lens, because obviously you're losing a little bit of, the, of that extra focal range, but from the 50 to 300, for what I would use it personally when it comes down to just getting up close and personal for a little bit of you know sports photography, maybe a little bit of portrait in there because I want that extra compression, it's worth the money in my opinion to go for the $800 range. Now, if I was a little bit more for the wildlife kind of photographer where I need to be a little bit further back and I need to have a little bit more separation because I need to be able to hide myself better when it comes down to wildlife photography, the 50 to 400 is probably gonna be a better bet. That extra 100 millimeter focal range is a lot of a massive difference when it comes down to a telephoto lens, especially for this focal range. From the 300 to the 400, there's so much you're giving up whenever you need that extra, you know, kind of bump when it comes down to wildlife photography or anything that needs to be from a really further out distance. If you're shooting a lot of fields, whether it's outside for like, let's say baseball, maybe football, soccer, where the subject is a lot further away, you might be better off with getting that extra focal range and the extra weight, sadly, at the extra cost, but still having an amazing lens. For me personally, with tennis, the good thing is you're more up close and personal. The field itself, which is the tennis court, is not as big as it would be with other sports. Like for example, if you shoot maybe basketball, this could be a better lens for you as well. The drawback for both lenses is just gonna be their aperture. Depending on what you're looking for, you might need to be able to have a camera that's very good in low light. For example, my Sony a7 IV with a higher ISO, I've never been afraid to go into the 12,800 ISO or anything because I'm able to clean up my image fairly enough. And to be honest, a little bit of grain never hurt anybody when it comes to photos. So if you're gonna be shooting indoors, for example, at a basketball court where you're seeing the basketball game with the lights inside and you have to crank up that ISO because you need to freeze the moment with a higher shutter speed, well, you're gonna have to make that decision for yourself if it's gonna be fine to go with a lens like this because no matter which one you go with, you have the same aperture. So maybe you need something faster, like the G Master lenses that are like you can get a 2.8, but that comes with a heavier price tag. If you're like me, where you can make do with a little bit of ISO or you know put it in post and clean it up a little bit, these two lenses are gonna be great for that because whether you're outside or inside with the Sony cameras, you can get a really clean image. So I think for me personally, it's not that big of a deal. So there's pros and cons on that matter, depending on what you're trying to shoot. For myself, if you're gonna be outside with a nice natural light, both of these lenses have a big pro when it comes down to their aperture because at the end of the day, you do not need a 2.8 at 400 to get some nice compression and bokeh. You get good compression and bokeh at 300 or 400, even at a 6.3 that for me personally, it didn't really matter. Would it be nicer to not have to go that up? Of course, everybody would love to have a 1.8 kind of telephoto lens, but realistically, you would have a lens so massive that you're not gonna ever use it because it's gonna be too heavy for you to take out. But a little bit of the cons when it comes down to these lenses, probably the biggest con is gonna be for this one, the weight itself is just a lot bigger and it even feels bigger than my 35 to 150 and that boy is already a chunky boy. So if you're obviously needing to be a little bit more compact, lighter and everything, not gonna be the lens for you when it comes down to that. With this lens, obviously the con is gonna be losing a little bit of this customization button, especially if you know you're gonna need them. Because if you need some extra customization, this lens obviously lacks it. You have only one button right here that you're able to press, and it's good to be able to at least customize it that way. But if you shoot with a camera that's like the Sony A7C Mark II or the A7CR, well, you're not gonna have as many custom buttons in your camera. You're gonna have to rely as well on your lenses. So that could be a little downfall. But if you shoot with me, like how I do with my Sony A7 IV, well, I have customizations without the, throughout the camera that I'm okay with giving up some of that customization like the 50 to 400 has. So that begs the following questions. Who are these lenses for? And honestly, probably somebody's gonna ask me which one I would go for. Firstly, I wanna cover who these lenses could be for. Especially the 50 to 300, I think it's gonna be great for a person that's not 100% sure they wanna go to telephoto just yet, and they want something lighter that they can bring out with them and not feel like it's a drag to bring out. 
Nothing is worse than getting a piece of glass or, you know, camera gear that you're not going to be using, especially because you feel like it's too heavy. So with that being said, having a lighter setup like the 50 to 300 for that focal range that you can get and the aperture and all things considered with the price, not a bad choice to go with. If you're trying to start diving into a little bit more of the wildlife photography, maybe you want to do more sports photography and start try to get those kind of jobs and everything. This is going to be a great starter lens to go with, especially because of the focal range that you get for the price point. The 50 to 400 is great if you're obviously knowing that you're wanting to have a little bit of that extra length for wildlife photography because you know you have to distance yourself from it. You don't want to be close enough to, you know, the, the subject because you want to be letting them be in their nature and your spots and everything doing what they do. So you capture more genuine shots. So if you're wanting to have that kind of separation and have a little bit of that extra focal length with more customizations of the bun, this is going to be the great lens for you. Personally, I don't think you can go wrong with either lens because if you're shaving off some weight for some money and then losing a little bit of focal length because you know you're going to use it more, that's perfectly fine. Same difference as if you're wanting to add a more customization buttons, you don't mind the extra weight, but you get that extra focal length, obviously very great. They both have the same filter thread size, so you're not really gaining anything or losing anything from that end. So you'd be fine either way that you go with. It's not like you're getting an 82 millimeter thread side because the size is bigger. They're both 67 millimeter. So that kind of like adds a little bit of peace of mind to know which one to go with. Now for the ultimate question of which one I would get and why. Personally, I think I would lean more with a 50 to 300, mainly because of the weight and the focal range that I would be fine with. As much as I love testing out the 50 to 400 previously and using it at my tennis academy and everything, I personally don't need that 400 range for what I would need. The 300 is more than enough and it's well for any scenarios of going out if I want to do some minor wildlife photography or anything of that sort. Luckily, with the 33 megapixels of my Sony a7 IV, I can crop in a little bit more or even use it in APS-C mode to get that extra focal length just in case I need it. Especially with shooting 4K60, I can zoom in and I get a little bit of the vibration compensation to help out with the slow motion and as well with the stabilization of my Sony a7 IV that it works out perfectly and it's nothing, you know, you know, nothing wrong with that at all because you still get great quality. So for me personally, because of the price point and what you get out of it, the 50 to 300 has been a great addition to the Tamron line. I'm actually very surprised that they went with something so similar to each other because it kind of could affect a little bit of the sales of one to the other. But I am actually very glad that they did that because it gives you more options of which one you should get and why, because it all depends on your why. Why am I going to use this lens? Well, it's because I'm going to be shooting the maybe more wildlife style. Why would I choose this lens? Well, I'm OK with having less weight with less customization because I want to be more mobile and out and about for the type of shoots that I want to do. So having those options is great. And I think it's really awesome to see the difference of price point that can work with people's budgets so you can get more into the telephoto side of range of things. But if you have any questions regarding these lenses, please let me know down below in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to help you out to see if I can help you best out to choose the right lens for you. But with all that said and done, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video with a friend. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.